Hello and welcome to our program where we explore issues of importance to the South Caucasus region. My name is Dr. Joanne Lasoski and I'm an author and journalism educator. We are once again chatting with Azerbaijani journalist Savinj Azmangaza. Hello, Savinj. Hello, Joanne. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you. This week, uh, we witnessed the much anticipated meeting in Brussels. Uh, the meeting included U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen, EU High Commissioner for Foreign Affairs Joseph Borrell, and interestingly, Prime Minister Nicole Pashinyan from Armenia. Now, what was the crux of this meeting and what was the outcome? Well, it was a well anticipated meeting and, um, and uh, there was a lot of uh, protest um, against the meeting as well. But uh, the basically, as the uh, president of European Commission, uh, uh, Mrs. von der Leyen said she, the idea was to support uh, Armenia's resilience. Indeed, the fact the plan by the European Commission that envisages uh, 270 million euros to Armenia is called um, resilience and growth plan for Armenia. Uh, United States uh, in its turn also is uh, pledging another uh, 65 million dollars but you know actually after the meeting was over there was a very interesting press conference by the digital press conference by uh, assistant secretary uh, james o'brien where it went further and explained uh, and gave quite interesting details about what's been discussed behind the doors. And he said that one of the issues that was discussed uh, was the middle corridor and that Ar how Armenia may also benefit from it. Joanne, I think this is fundamental. It's really big. Um, it actually reminds me the contract of the century of Azerbaijan that was signed back in 1994 by government of Azerbaijan and the uh, International Consortium of uh, Oil Companies. Although there it was uh, about transporting gas to uh, Europe, uh, sorry, transporting oil uh, to Europe, uh, but here it uh, I think the male overall target purpose was uh, is the same, is to strengthen the regional countries so that they get eco economic independence and can, uh, in case of Armenia, is actually to distance itself from Russia. So I think it's really big because uh, so far uh, this is a well-kept secret, I think, from the public because uh, this has been conducted behind the closed doors. Uh, the participants of the middle corridor are uh, Georgia, Azerbaijan, Turkey, Kazakhstan and China. Uh, but uh, the main uh, Zengezur, or what uh, Armenian side calls a Sunni corridor, uh, Russia has its own plan, which is to install its own uh, border patrol uh, on the Sunni or Zengezur region of Armenia. Obviously, if the uh, middle corridor, the way that United States, European Union and West supports, obviously will have a different scenario for Armenia. Was there any indication that this discussion included ways to cool down the tensions between Azerbaijan and Armenia, or was it not a meeting that had anything to do with um, the heating up of the conflict? Oh, it has everything to do with it, because if there is no war, there will be no economic projects. Okay. Uh, so this is an important uh, element of it, and interestingly, the day uh, the Brussels meetings was held, and after that, uh, there were skirmishes. Uh, there was a um, ceasefire was broken uh, on the border. Yes, uh, it actually uh, intensifies the meaning uh, of uh, peace uh, process because uh, if uh, there is no peace, if there is a war, obviously the uh, middle corridor, the way that. Uh, the country see it uh, will not be able to be implemented. And including Armenia, I do think that it's a good news both for Armenia and Azerbaijan because uh, it shows that uh, the West wants uh, Armenia to be strengthened. 
and uh, also sees as a as a region as a whole where all countries are integrated and peaceful. Well, you, you mentioned earlier that there were protests against this and not surprising three countries specifically protested against this meeting, Azerbaijan, Russia and Turkey. Why was this happening? Well, for different reasons, uh, Azerbaijan uh, protested because, uh, first of all, it wasn't participated. It, it wasn't part of the meeting. Um, and although we did not get uh, answer whether there was an invite for the uh, as head of Azerbaijan state, uh, but um, also the uh, press release by the president of it of Azerbaijan said that uh, claimed that uh, this uh, creates a um, threat to Azerbaijan that. Uh, in previous statements, Azerbaijani Foreign Ministry said that uh, this is turning the EU mission in Armenia is no longer uh, pursuing its mission, that it is turning into NATO forces, something that uh, Russian uh, Foreign Ministry said the next day. Uh, Turkey's protest um, did have uh, some uh, rational elements uh, saying that uh, it would be more fruitful and productive if all sides, including Azerbaijan, um, participated in the meeting that uh, not having Azerbaijan does not uh, yield to a uh, positive outcome. But yes, all these three countries uh, basically protested. And what, what about uh, Iran? There was no reaction from Iran about this meeting? Joanna, this is actually interesting because um, it is uh, indeed uh, Iran is a big player in the region and uh, one would assume that uh, the protests would come from Iran as well. I think um, there is something to it because uh, we know that in the past uh, the government of Azerbaijan offered um, some role uh, to Iran in the uh, middle corridor. And uh, frankly, there wasn't much um, optimism uh, on the Iranian side. Um, and on the other hand, Iran has numerous times uh, stressed that, emphasized that it is against um, United States and Europe's close relations with Armenia, but uh, and that it will be red red line for Iran if the, uh, the its border are changed, its borders with Armenia changed. Um, so it tells me that uh, probably uh, Iran uh, did not protest, even though it is against in general uh, about U.S. and uh, Europe's participation uh, in, 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 in Armenia, presence in Armenia, but overall it understands that the uh, Armenian's security will be better protected uh, by the collective West. Now, you made a comment earlier about um, Azerbaijan foreign minister saying that the EU mission in Armenia was turning into a NATO force. Um, Russia agreed with that. Um, because U.S. and Canada have joined and it's no longer an observation mission. Where is this concern coming from? Um, well, I think uh, the very fact that the mission is growing and that there will be more countries like uh, United States and Canada uh, joining it uh, obviously creates some concern in Azerbaijan that uh, you're, uh, you know, while there is no peace agreement, peace treaty, that the other side may be getting weapons and military support from the West. So this part is understandable. Um, what strikes me is that the it resemblance is striking, how similar uh, the wording was chosen uh, by Azerbaijani and Russian foreign ministries. So I wouldn't be surprised if they were written by the same person. Um, in, in fact, it is an irony that Azerbaijan um, liberated or uh, returned Karabakh, but after that, its sovereignty, at least sovereignty over its uh, foreign ministry, seems to be more compromised. Hmm. So it seems as though Russia is, is, of course, not happy that NATO is 
being involved or, or maybe turning into a NATO force. And I'm curious, what do the people in Azerbaijan think about integ integration into NATO? Do they agree with the official narrative that NATO and the West are not welcome into this region? Is there support for the EU or NATO? Joanne, first of all, uh, there is a very strong uh, propaganda narrative that uh, the West and uh, specifically NATO, United States um, and France are uh, preparing Armenia for a possible war. Uh, so any really television station you tune in, you would get this narrative. Um, and uh, so I have to say that uh, indeed certain people actually buy that. But Preparing for war against Russia? Against Azerbaijan. Against Azerbaijan. Yes. And um, hmm. obviously there is a given um, like... Um, anti-sympathy or caution uh, against uh, some statements by France. For instance, uh, some French officials in the past made uh, certain statements. Uh, by the way, uh, talking about this, uh, speaking about the Brussels meeting, for instance, the foreign, uh, the French uh, foreign minister just before, just two days before the Brussels meeting, um, said that uh, at the joint press conference with State Secretary Blinken uh, that Armenia probably is the only country in the region uh, that is willing, that wants peace. Uh, so in a way, I was not surprised that Turkey also protested uh, against Brussels meeting. Um, and in a way, it was a response to a foreign French minister, uh, French foreign minister. So back to rhetoric, uh, indeed, uh, but a lot of people hear that uh, nonstop, that there is a threat, that there are NATO forces coming, that they're preparing uh, for escalation. And in this scenario, obviously, having Armenia been backed by uh, Western countries, by U US and Europe is not good news for Azerbaijan. But on the other hand, uh, I see that the number of people who question uh, the situation, the status quo is increasing. Uh, people, uh, indeed, there was uh, some poll conducted by a media outlet in Azerbaijan asking, do you think that Brussels meeting uh, is a threat to Azerbaijan? And 30% said that it's not gonna, it's not threat, it's actually good news. Um, so the a lot of people are all asking this question uh, that uh, we delivered victory, we won, but on the other hand, um, Armenia is now integrating into Europe that it may get a status, uh, candidate status for European Union. One day it may actually uh, pursue NATO integration. So people do ask these questions that how come that it's not us doing that. Indeed, if you watch the Brussels meeting, there was a lot of yeah, praise to democratic reforms in Armenia against something that um, nobody can say that about Azerbaijani government. Um, indeed, we did have presidential elections on February 7th and uh, a lot of um, irregularities, uh, multiple voting, people voting 10 times <laughs> um, and nothing has been investigated. So people do uh, question this and they say, uh, how come that we are the side that won this war, but we cannot conduct a simple presidential election. So which one is better? So if 30% of the people um, sort of disagree with the rhetoric that is being fed through the local television stations. Where do you have any ideas on where they may be getting their information from? I think it's people who are uh, are in, on the, in the internet. They're getting their news uh, from international news. Uh, they follow news what's happening in the region, in Georgia, in Armenia, in Russia. Uh, it's the kind of people who are not dependent on the propaganda uh, machine of the government. So they have a more kind of uh, picture uh, so what's going on in the region, what's better. And uh, like uh, recently, for instance, uh, there were municipal elections in Turkey. Uh, you know that people are closely following events in Turkey. 
and uh, these elections uh, opposition had a landslide victory throughout the country so it's been welcomed by uh, Azerbaijanis and they are also asking uh, why not us so the region is changing uh, Georgia is as already has uh, the candidate status. Armenia is, is being praised for democratic reforms. Turkey's opposition changed the situation and proved that, you know, you can change things. So why not us? So maybe we, we should be next. So if people are having those kinds of discussions at the dinner table, maybe, um, and, and particularly about how um, the rest of the South Caucasus are moving in the right direction, what are they doing about this? Are there protests happening in Azerbaijan? I know when I was there, there were many protests, but that was many years ago. Are, are we seeing protests on the street? Are we seeing people in any way voicing their concerns about the lack of progress? Not really. Uh, Azerbaijan is protest free. <laughs> um, no protests are allowed, uh, whether it is by a large uh, group or by one person, all kinds of protests are f forbidden, prohibited. Uh, there is no much uh, independent media left in Azerbaijan. Indeed, we saw arrests of uh, dozens of independent journalists. So the for NGOs uh, cannot receive any donations, uh, cannot be, uh, cannot function. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, people do have internet. They see how the world is changing. Uh, so this rhetoric uh, that, you know, we, we got your security, we're the best country, we're the strongest in the region. Uh, for a long time, uh, this rhetoric that Armenia is a forepost of Russia, that there is a Russian base in Armenia. So this situation is also changing. As you know, uh, Yerevan gave a deadline to Russia to leave this Vartnos airport in Yerevan. So we have to wait and see whether that indeed happens. But if it does happen, it will give hope to people of Azerbaijan that to Azerbaijan that uh, one day uh, Russian so-called peacekeepers can also leave Karabakh. Uh, I'm sure that uh, they will be followed by uh, Moldova, Georgia, Ukraine, etc. So um, the, it's, it's very hard to hide the truth from the people. People are still hungry for reality, for what's happening. Uh, so I cannot say that these debates, for instance, are happening in Azerbaijani television channels, not at all. Uh, but in the Internet, people are following and watching. And uh, so I can say that the process is there. And they're getting some information from you as well. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Every Terrific. day. Yes. <laughs> so I want to thank you for giving us an update on thank what you. happened in Brussels and some other um, issues that are of importance to the South Caucasus. Um, thank you for joining us, and we'll be meeting with Savinj again soon, and we just hope that she stays safe.